have received by way of Australia another news film record of the war in the Far East, the war of jungle and swamp and heat and flies, pictures of the kind of life that is hard enough to live without fighting a highly trained nation as well. It tells of hazardous journeys through the wildest country to reconnoitre Japanese dispositions. The camera tells its vivid story from the other side of the world of a primitive kind of war, aided and made more terrible by modern weapons, machine guns, automatic rifles and radio. A wireless transmitting station was set up here to pass information back to jungle headquarters. And the lonely trek proceeded. And here another lonely outpost provides evidence of 1943 war. Destruction of Japanese bombers. This one the first shot down by night in this area. The squadron leader who made the kill was having a shave when friends dropped in to congratulate him. And he gave a demonstration of how it was done. Here in New Guinea is the Australian CNC General Blamey. Discussing details with the officers of his command and watching the arrival of troops by air. Nearly all transport in this area is by giant troop carrying planes. And you'll notice that here Australian and American troops are working in close cooperation. And now our Far Eastern camera swings west from the Pacific to the island of Timor. An island formerly run jointly by Portuguese and Dutch, but held by Japanese since February 1942. But when the Japanese took it, a handful of Australians and Dutch refused to surrender. Now for the first time their amazing story is presented. They have been living like cave dwellers of a bygone age. For 59 days, the world had no knowledge of their existence. But they were fighting a guerrilla war. Day and night making time or as dangerous a place for the Japanese as it was for themselves. Japanese planes searched but never found them. After one ambush, this Dutch officer was wounded in the stomach. Brought back to the camp, he was patched up by the guerrilla's doctor with his scanty supply of drugs and instruments. So they carried on. This kangaroo shooter from the Australian bush has killed 47 Japanese for certain. They made a radio transmitting set, built from odds and ends of equipment, some of which they stole from under the nose of Japanese guards. After 59 days of silence, they got word through to Darwin to send supplies. At first, the receiving signals officer suspected a Japanese trick he asked for proof, the name of the wife of Jack Sargent, one of the company of these strange, brave men of Timor. Of course, they were able to give the name, Joan, proof that the call was genuine. And Australia sent them food and arms and silver money and above all, letters from home. With the money, they were able to buy the services they needed from the inhabitants of Timor and set off to raid a Japanese village headquarters. Nothing more strange than this story of a little lost army has ever been known in the most exciting boy's book of adventure. help from the friendly tribes they met on the island. A mystery island in a forgotten world, but remembering to fight the enemies of Britain. The commanding officer congratulates five of his men on specially good work. Perhaps you can imagine how tough they must be. 
what a problem they have proved to the Japanese conquerors of the island. Conquerors of all parts of it, that is, except where this bearded army chooses to come and fight. Don't worry about whether the British Empire is decaying or dying. Men like these are the British Empire. Thank <laughs> you.